Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so called black man. From hero to villain in just under a year. Let me repeat that again. From hero to villain in just under a year. These same people who they were praising last year are now being looked under a microscope as being toxic or non-compliant with the new mandates that are being implemented. And who are these heroes, you might ask? Yes, those same heroes that were working in your hospitals, your nursing homes, your first responders, and your frontline workers. They were all being praised and looked at as heroes last year, 2021. 2020, I mean. Now in 2021, they are being looked at as villains because they won't comply with the mandates. And what you see here is an article from the LA Times, and we're going to go into it and see just what the opinion on these villains are all about. And then we're going to get a couple of scriptures and see how that uh, correlates with this. So once again, from hero to villain, all in under just a year. They were getting all kind of rewards and praises and discounts and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, the narrative have changed. <laughs> and now they're being looked at with a different eye, under a different microscope. Now, now they're being revered as, as a villain. And we're going to see why. So this is the Los Angeles Times. And it says, fire the first responders who, rev who refuse C-19 jab. And it goes on to read, to the editor, so a large fraction of our police and firefighters don't want to listen to health officials or pay attention to the reams of data showing that the C-19 jabs work. They're not responding to prizes and other positive incentives for getting the jabs. Well then, it's time for negative incentives. Get the jabs or you're fired. I mean, can you even imagine a lawsuit when a first responder gives life-saving CPR to someone and instead transmit life-taking C's or fails to administer, administer CPR for fear of doing, for doing the same? It's time to stop coddling, coddling the know-nothings. Our lives depend on it. It is appalling that only about 51% of city firefighters and 52% 50, of Los Angeles Police Department officers are at least partially jabbed. These people interact constantly with members of the public and refusing jabs put them their families, and the people they serve in danger. Full jabs should immediately be made a job requirement, just as hepatitis and tendonitis jabs are required. The low jab rates among police officers, firefighters, and other first responders raise troubling questions. When education physical strength, training, and competence are all standard requirements for any first responder's employment. How can it be okay for them to refuse a jab that will keep the public they serve safer? And you can see the mindset of these people. Maybe that question is better answered by others with more knowledge of the employee protections afforded by unions. Maybe the uniforms are the problem. See that? As a citizen, 
I want to know that the first responder that I come in contact with is jabbed. As a citizen in a consumer who is paying for emergency services, I have that right. Just a year ago, they weren't even thinking about all that. But now since the narrative has changed, now these heroes that was once revered is being looked at under a different microscope as the villain all of a sudden. Let's see if there's any more else. Okay, so that was it. So from this article, you could put together and see how the, the whole narrative has switched from these people being once revered as a hero to now being looked at just not even over a year ago, now being looked at as a villain. And let's get a couple of scriptures and see the reason why behind all of this right here, which is going on. Okay. All right. This is a uh, second estrus in the apocryphy chapter 16. And we're going to jump down to verse 72. And it says, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So a lot of these people are going to be cast away out of their houses, out of their employments, out of their jobs. They're going to take away their goods, their rights that they once had and were revered, and were revered for, for. So it says, then shall, then shall they be known. Who are my chosen? Because why? Because his chosen ain't going to be worried about what job they have if it's going against the word of the Most High or what goods is being taken away or anything because they know they're going to be taken care of through Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh shot. So it says, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold and the fire. That's right. So you're going to be tried. Get, get the jab or lose your job. But that's just going to make you stronger. It's going to try you like that gold going through that fire. And you're going to have to solely rely on your Yahweh and let him provide for you. Not no employment or anything else. If it's that time for you to leave, it's that time. Don't fight it. You know what's going on. You know what time we in. So it says, Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. See there? So he going to make a way. Don't worry about it. Let him come to you and, and make all you know, the accusations they want against you, you're going to be taken care of. It says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, and that's the only guide you need. Guide you need. You need not to worry about trying to preserve yourself and compromising at the same time and getting a, a jab just to keep you know, what you see in the present far as the way you live in a flow. You're going to be taken care of. You're going to be guided by the Almighty, Yahweh. So it says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God, guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Almighty. So you got to stay in this word. You got to continue to work on making yourself better. This is the time now that you need to get ready for what's coming. To, for what's coming. So it says, let not your sins weigh you down. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So don't go out and do something you know you're not supposed to be doing. That, that, that's breaking the law, statutes, commandments, and judgments. Putting a foreign substance in your body. You know, don't let them use scare tactics and, and get you to sit against your power. All right. 
So it says, woe be unto them that are bound with their sins, right? And covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered with slakia. So like as a field is covered over with brushes, bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. It is undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So there is no reward for you once you follow out the man. There is no path. There is no salvation. All right, let's get this in uh, the book of Mark, St. Mark. All right, this is a... Uh, St. Mark chapter 8, and we're going to go down to verse 36. This is uh, Yahweh Shah speaking. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? So let's say you go ahead, you know, you get the jab, you keep your job, you keep everything afloat how it was before. You may even, in your mind, perceive to strive and do a little bit better. And it goes on to say, and lose his own soul. But now you done lost your own soul because you've been compromised. There's, not, there's nothing else left for you or left in you. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Or what should you give in exchange for your soul? Are you ready to lose your morality, your morale, your, your, you know, your conscience, your spirit? All because this scared tactic is having you suck against yourself, suck and, you know, doubt yourself on what's real and what's not. Whosoever therefore should be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So when Yahweh shall I come back to rescue us out of this captivity, and he look at you and he see, you know, when you had that opportunity to deny that, that jab, which is eventually going to lead to the to the MOB. You didn't do it. So now you want me to come get you? So it says, he ain't going to do it. He's going to be ashamed of you just like he was ashamed of him. So it's best right now that you heed to this word and build up your faith and your strength and be prepared for when that moment arise you'll be ready to, to stand strong in the faith is to stand strong in this word and uh that's basically what i wanted to bring out how the narrative has changed from being a hero to a villain and it's going to get even worse so with that being said i'm going to close out with first peter and we're going to take it from there this is first peter Chapter 5 in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he gonna push every scared tactic known to mankind to get you to acquiesce, to comply with whatever mandates he so sees fit for whatever agenda he's pushing. So best be ready. It better be, you know, you better know what's going on. Because if not, he will devour you. And he's looking to devour you like a roaring lion. So with that being said, Shalom.